let's uh, let's talk about some laminating. Um, uh, I hope you've got Phil back with us there. Um, Phil, if I remember, the 106 um, is uh, uh, was a, was an okay laminating system. We've obviously got dedicated systems in the Ampreg systems, which is a whole other subject. But it was an okay laminating system. It was pretty okay, like any general purpose. Any differences with the Ampro? You know, fundamentally, as a general purpose system, if you wet out a bit of glass, RE292 or something for, for coating or sheathing, it, it'll wet out in a, in a very similar method to 106. You know, this is a similar viscosity um, product. I think the fundamental difference is your overcoating window now. You know, you, you really had to be very careful uh, with the older system to uh, to hit those either tack on tack with your laminate or, or, or fillers. Um, for this, you know, given the atmospheric conditions, you can leave it, you can laminate straight on top of it. And I think we sort of covered it quite briefly, but it does make a huge difference, you know, to your stress levels when you're sheathing something. You you know, you, you, you can go and you can stop, you can have a break, you can probably make that job better. So as an overall, overall general purpose laminating improvement, I think that's that's the key message there. But viscosity wise, quite similar. Question for you, Phil, because I'm quite intrigued by this four day over window, is that if you've got, if, you've, if you're doing a larger boat, for instance, and you know, you're not going to sheave the whole thing in one go, you know, if you're getting to day three and close to your open window, I take Steve's point about, you know, not being in Thailand at 98% humidity and, 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 and 45 degrees, but in sunny England, we're, 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 we're relatively sensible. So if we're getting to the end of that window, can we refresh it with a with a lighter laminate that we might be able to do the whole boat in a day or, or even just roll a coat of resin on and extend that by another four days? Yeah, it's, it's all perfectly possible with, with this system, you know, a, a fresh mixture will we'll refresh the substrate and the laminate, a lighter laminate to, to carry on with. Good idea. You know, like all these things, you become a professional as you use these systems and you understand its its limits and, and, and yours as well. And I think this system is much more accepting of our human limits. You know, you don't have to start at six in the morning and, you know, finish at nine at night. You can, you can stop and uh, and come back to it. Like you said, refresh it with a new mix. Give yourself an extra extra four day window as long as everything's in place and you're happy. Absolutely. Yeah. Great difference. Great. Great for people to use, you know. I've always worried because going back to the questions of the boat show is, you know, about overcoating them because we've always said that, you know, if it's still chewy and you can get your thumb, fingernail into it, you yeah. can go again and get a primary bond. But the one thing we always advise people in those days is that once that goes, it's it's a very quick cut off with most epoxies, isn't it? It goes from being a primary chemical bond to having no bond at all as soon as that amine forms on the surface. So yeah, it's, that's quite a big difference. Um, cool. OK, um, let's. Uh, um, we're going to go back over to the lab and, uh, and and just have a look at some glass being laminated. So um, uh, we'll uh, see if Steve and Martin have got given them enough time waffling on between you and me to get them ready. There they are. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> uh, OK, so yes, the conversation is going around sheathing and basically impregnating fabric. The, the Ampro is similar viscosity, as Phil said. So actually using it as a sheathing resin as the old 106, no issues whatsoever. So I'm just going to basically paint on a coat of resin onto this bit of wood. This could be pre-done, as said before. You could have um, pre-sealed your surface and just come on and do your laminating the following day. In the uh, aspects of time, we'll go with a quick on the on the job. So I just wanted to put a basically. This is a 300 gram glass, relatively typical sheathing fabric. Um, and I just wanted to basically show you to the screen how quickly this will wet through. I'm literally just touching the brush onto the fabric to make sure that what's underneath is coming through and anything I put on top is going in. Is that working for you? Yeah, you can just about see it on that side. Um, the, um, do you recommend, I, I think uh, we, we were talking the other day, do you recommend using a squeegee to take any excess off? Is, is, is in the... If you want to minimise what the amount of resin you're using, yes, I, on, a, on a simple flat surface, a plastic squeegee is probably the quickest way of applying the resin. You can literally pour on a stream of resin onto the fabric and then use the blade to spread it across. And the blade with a bit of downward pressure and a back angle will basically draw that resin into the fibre for you. So. Either way, um, the, if detail, you'll probably always have to come back to a brush anyway. Have you got that fully clear now? I can't see it for quite so well on the screen. Is that fully clear now? Wow. 
Okay. That's wood. Straight through. Perfect. That's okay. right. You can see that much better there. That's that's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Moving back to uh, Chris, if we may. Hello. Yeah, some really good questions coming in, actually. Uh, two or th yeah, three. Um, uh, is Ampro compatible with chop strand mat reinforcement? Oh, Phil, do you want to answer that one? Uh, Simon, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't take the pleasure away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, as a sim no, no, it's not. No, no, not really. Any epoxies are uh, compatible with CSM. It's the binders; they don't break down oh. with epoxy. Oh, yeah, all, all of that, all of that smelly stuff that's in that yeah. polyester that really stings the place out is styrene, and it's a solvent, and it breaks the binders down. But if you must, and we have had some instances where it's been specified in a build, uh, someone had to—I won't tell you who the builder was or thing—but someone ha ha had uh, specified tabbing in bulkheads with epoxy and chop strand mat. And the first attempt they used um, an emulsion bound and the emulsion bound wouldn't be touched. And then they used a the powder bound and the, and the epoxy will eventually break down a powder bound, but it took them for ages to do it. You really don't want to do it because that, that, that when you put the polyester resin on it, it all becomes loose and floppy and goes in the right place. Doesn't happen with an epoxy because it hasn't got that nasty stinky styrene with it. So hopefully that uh, answers that question. I think. I think also, Simon, you've got to remember epoxy is, a, you know, it's an engineered formulation. And, and so let's use engineered fabrics that, you know, that, let's not use random orientated CSMs. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a sledgehammer to crack a nut, really, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been using Ampro 30 for building small carbon rudders and general boatyard jobs. Should I really be using Ampro? And what about working times? Is it quicker? Um, Phil, what do you reckon to that one? Um, you know, working times are hardener dependent. Um, in a small boatyard, if you're laying up rudders, I would go with a laminating system, not a general purpose system. Only the viscosity is different. The way it wets out multiple layers of fiber is a little bit different. You, although the Ampro does wet out very well, we've just seen it. Um, you know, a rudder, you want to be, be careful. Uh, that you get a really, really good laminate, you know, well wet out. And, and so I would stick with laminating resins that are formulated just for laminating. Um, if, if you're also, you know, if, 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 if you're repairing, then, then Ampro is probably better. But if you're building from new, I would stick with the uh, laminating systems. I don't know if that answers all your questions. I mean, you know, you can still thicken up Am Ampreg systems, Ampreg 30. You can thicken that up and screed it uh, to fill it as well. Um, but you know, it's horses for courses, isn't it? This stuff is is more robust. It's got a bit more robustness built into it. So, um, for specific jobs like that, especially if you're using carbon, I would go with the uh, the laminating resin. Stick with it. It's a bit again because I, I I think although you guys and the, the, the clever chemists um, or the amusing chemists, as I think Steve called them a minute ago, have, have, have increased the mechanicals of the of the multi-purpose resin, they're still not up at the laminating resin level, are they? So if you're using carbon, it's again that sort of use the resin to match the the, the technology. Is that is that a, a fair that, thing? That, that's absolutely right. Absolutely yeah. right. You know, you okay. can talk about TGs and 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 you know shear tensiles and compressions and all that sort of stuff. You'll get a better product with a with a specific laminating resin. Okay. Um, any more from you, Chris? Yeah, just just one last one. Uh, any post cure requirements, um, or is it just an ambient curing resin? Um, Steve, should we go to you on that one? I'm just going to keep on talking for a second. You got your mic on, perfect. Um, uh, yeah. Steve, Steve, could you answer that question? Yeah. So, um, as talking about other amp or oh, ampreg systems, ampreg is generally a post cured system. You want to be hitting 50 degrees. The ampro is more of a hobby type material. You don't need to post cure it. It will cure ambiently quite as well. Um, you will always help its improvement in properties by giving it a bit of a post cure. However, that can happen on its own over time. So it's not critical to actually go on and post cure anything before, before using a component. It'll be absolutely fine. Um, so anything at room temperature, if you've had if you've had made something in a cold five degree shed, you will end up with a relatively low TG. But as soon as you warm any environment to a room temperature point of view, it'll come on through very, very quickly. So yes, not critical. I, I, over the years, just to add my 10 pence worth in from the boat show questions and things that we get, it's interesting. There are quite a lot of resin systems and Ampro is sort of one of them that turn around and say, you don't need to post cure it. But 
any chemist in the world, if you ask them the question, would it be better if you post cured it? The answer would be yes. Yeah. Um, so it, it, you don't need to, and especially the faster systems, their pre is very good. But will it be better if you post cure it? Yes, it will. Um, and um, uh, it's, it's it's just one of those things. And the same applies to all other resin systems, uh, polyester, vinyl ester, everything like that. They'll all be better if you add heat to them, and they'll all be more stable, and they'll all resist print fruit.